They have everything and nothing. The rainforests of DRC provide for the tens of thousands of small communities who live there, from a roof over their heads to food for the pot. But infrastructure is minimal. Schools and hospitals, if any, are barely equipped. Electricity, none. The question, perhaps oil can change things for the better. To find out, our next mode of transport. So here's the next form of travel. After two days on the river, we're on the motorbikes on our way to the nearest village. Let's go. There are no roads. This is the only, sometimes precarious, way to go. The path is hazardous. We eventually arrive. Pretty much the whole village come to hear our conversation with the chief. And he's defiant. My first reaction is that people would have to kill me and then kill our people before this happens. Our everyday life depends on the river. If anything happens to this river, our life's destroyed. Outside, a village elder sings the ancient song of the river. Show me the way to land. The next day, we head off to a neighbouring block that's up for auction. Here, we were not welcome. You know, you get a very real sense of the depth of feeling here just by driving along this track through these little communities because we keep being mistaken for being part of the oil exploration project. And quite a lot of people, the adults, have come running out shouting, get out of here, we don't want you here, we want to keep our forest, leave our forest alone. And it has got quite aggressive as well. Villagers berating our producer, Alan Yukani, as we tried to explain, we're just wanting their opinion. We move on, eventually able to make our intentions plain. The message is clear. I am not happy. It's the first time we've heard of it. I cannot be happy with the news that we'd have to give up our village where we have links to our ancestors. We cannot accept this. The focus should be on community development, not oil. The government should bring support for agriculture. We need seeds so we can grow things, tomatoes for example, not just one or two crops. People are very well aware of the wealth potential of their country. But as they've seen with the huge mining profits generated in the east of DRC, nothing ever filters down to the poor. The visceral connection to the land and a total lack of faith in the government means for these communities at least, oil exploration is a non-starter. Nick Clark, Al Jazeera, Isoko, Democratic Republic of Congo.